Perhaps there is no other mech which embodies the clan of its origins, much like the mech to be investigated in this video. A remarkable maverick of a medium battle mech when it first appeared, as heavily guarded by plating as many heavies, and as fast as many lights, while being armed like a medium mech, this hunter was given the name Fenris by the defenders of the Inner Sphere, more specifically by the Free Rosselhaig Republic and the Lyran Commonwealth, in the devastating invasion of the clans in 3049. Without further delay though, let us begin examining Clan Ice Hellion's tragedy, once known as the Wolf Hunter, the Ice Ferret. A medium mech weighing in at 45 tons, the Ice Ferret is considered a staple of Clan Wolf, and later Clan Wolf in Exile, but it has not always been so. A devastating and well-crafted war machine from the 30th century, it was in fact first built by Clan Ice Hellion, one of the homeworld clans which never found their way into the invasion corridor. In fact, because it was denied the opportunity to invade, they tried to force the invading clans to allow them to participate in the invasion after the debacle that was Tukiid. This, of course, failed miserably, and more or less encompasses Clan Ice Hellion's entire existence, and most of its exploits in the lore, all the way up until its abysmal half-escape from the clan homeworlds. The Ice Ferret was originally built to be, in fact, a deliberate anti-clan wolf weapon, and was given even the name the Wolf Hunter by the Ice Hellions who opted in the latter half of the 29th century to use these battle mechs as a means to harass and antagonize Clan Wolf. I'm not going to express too much of my opinion here about the narratives around Clan Wolf, as the video isn't about that. But needless to say, the Wolf Hunter and the facilities that built it shortly after Clan Ice Hellion began this harassment campaign became officially property of Clan Wolf. I know it's a shocking outcome, truly. Remember folks, Clan Hell's horses were proud that they only lost two out of three battles against Clan Wolf over elementals. After acquiring the design and its manufacturing center on Tranquil, the wolves would rename it to the Ice Ferret, named for the only predator of the Ice Hellion. This now certified Clan Wolf battle mech would most prominently show up in their ranks during the invasion and would be the most heavily used medium mech in their Tumen. During this conflict, the design would proliferate through the entirety of the clan forces attacking the Inner Sphere though. Fast, heavily armored, and an Omni mech with a plethora of varied configurations. This would make the mech worthwhile enough that even enemies of the wolves would deploy them. The design would follow Clan Wolf in exile into the Inner Sphere and it would begin to be manufactured on Ark Royal, finding its way into Inner Sphere markets and eventually mercenary units as well, but most notably the Kelhounds. Still, it would be possible, though not certain, to find these machines with some level of support in potentially any war zone, but prosperity rarely lasts forever. When the clan homeworlds cut themselves off from the outside after the Wars of Reven, there would already be facilities manufacturing these fast-paced hunters in the Inner Sphere. By the Dark Age and Ill Clan era, its use would shrink significantly, partially because it was an older design, but also due to the fractious nature of the Inner Sphere during the multitude of crises that would plague it from the Blakest era forward. Ark Royal itself would fall to Clan Jade Falcon in 3146, but staff at the facilities which built the battle mech would hold back the tide of the Falcons using the ice ferrets they constructed to buy them time to offload vital equipment and personnel and escape the planet. As a result, the Falcons would only acquire a factory that they could not immediately restore, if they could restore it at all. But the ferret itself would, in the years that followed, be manufactured on one of the last gems of the Lyran Commonwealth, Dongal. Despite this success though, the day of the ice ferret's broad adoption across the inner sphere does seem done, at least for the moment. Once used far and wide, by this latter age, it would be found in the inventories of Clan Hell's horses, the Lyran Commonwealth and its breakaway components in the Hinterlands, the Wolf Empire, the Scorpion Empire, the Kelhounds, and the Wolf's Dragoons. Despite its use by Clan Wolf even during the conquest of Terra, it does not appear that those who brought it to the dance, in the Inner Sphere, 
have any means of manufacturing it anymore, or building replacement parts for it. It would seem, especially after the expulsion of Clan Jade Falcon from Ark Royal, that fascinatingly enough the Ice Ferret is mostly, at this time, a Lyran battle mech. What a strange time to be alive in the Ill Clan era. The 45-ton, 30th century Omnimech veteran known as the Ice Ferret, Wolf Hunter, or in the case of the Inner Sphere's identification, the Fenris, is a clan Omnimech with a series of important features. To begin with, while all clan systems are very dangerous, the Ice Ferret is much like the Viper before it. Despite being a medium mech, it focuses its energies away from its pod space in terms of its core concept. While 9.5 tons of pod space is not poor per se, it simply doesn't possess the kinds of pod space that any of its peers, save the Viper, have. The Kitfox, Adder, Nova, and Stormcrow are all much more substantially supported in this respect, but that's also because they don't focus on survivability and mobility in the way the Ferret does. Overall, less than 25% of its available tonnage is able to be contributed to its weapon systems. Every weight-saving measure is used in the Fenris which is not terribly uncommon for clan builds, and it spends critical space on board in order for it to have an endo-steel internal structure. Both the cockpit and gyro are standard configurations due to the model having no real major variations available at the time of its development. The Fenris also benefits from the use of clan double heatsinks, and as an Omnimech, it can install more modular heatsinks as necessary. Because of the enormous size of its engine, it has the ability to conceal the totality of its heat sinks within its power plant. It has 12 in total, as it invests 2 additional tons, giving it 24 cooling per turn. This will keep the mech running cool under most conditions, depending on its configuration, if only because it simply doesn't have much tonnage to spend on weapons regardless. For some of the finer details remaining, the Fenris has two clan electronic packages on board, First, its communication system is the Hellion Special 354B, and its targeting and tracking package is the Wolf Hunter Mark 7. The latter is superb and gifts the Ice Ferret with its only quirk, which is the improved sensor's trait. The largest single component on board the Fenris, as well as truthfully what the design was built most around, is the enormous 16.5 ton Type 2 360XL fusion engine. This power plant gifts the battle mech with the ability to run up to 129 kilometers per hour, or 12 movement points in the tabletop game. For a 45 ton battle mech, this is exceptionally impressive in terms of its ability to move on the field, under optimal conditions, if it has enough space and doesn't need to make many turns. In theory, the Fenris can acquire four more difficulty to be hit by just by running, which is extremely helpful in preventing the mech from taking fire. What all this movement in essence means is that the Ice Ferret is hard to pin down and hard to hit, but it also means it can position itself for success against both lighter and heavier foes. Maneuvering and setting up the right location in Battletech is life. The Fenris can get back attacks and flank attacks as needed. It can strike and fade. Only the fastest light mechs can keep up with it, which it will typically outgun and outarmor. The engine is the beating heart of this once Wolf Hunter and this element of the mech must be appreciated for what it embodies, because it is the core of the mech's success. Another place the Fenris excels at, is committed to, and allows the battle mech to thrive, is in the realm of physical defense. In general, clan medium mechs from Technical Readout 3050 are all exceptionally well defended, and the Ice Ferret is no different. This medium model supports 7.5 tons of clan ferrofibers plating, yielding it a mass of 144 points of armor, making it more protected than a Hellbringer and almost as protected as a Mad Dog. When combined with its speed, this makes the Fenris, much like the Viper, intensely difficult to dislodge from its plan of action, especially when navigating through favorable terrain. It will not only be burdensome to strike at for its adversaries, but even when hits land, all but the mightiest blows may fail to penetrate its armor. Only if a heavy gauss rifle or AC-20 makes contact with this mech does its armor fail it. Anything short of that might just be shirked off. As the Ice Ferret sprints to its desired location, its point of attack, 
or makes a daring escape. The Fenris Prime is certainly a fast, dedicated sniper platform based on its loadout, benefiting from high speed and decent armor. This mech will be able to stay in the fight for prolonged periods of time while taking deadly shots at enemies, before dashing away or repositioning to obscure itself. Its primary weapon is a clan ERPPC mounted in its left arm, and these weapons as a whole are renowned for their ability to immediately decapitate battle mechs in a single round of fire, provided that they do not have very specific late generation countermeasures. Doing 15 damage in a single hit is very impressive, and this is the main system the Fenris possesses in its base form. Outside of this, it has a right arm mounted SRM2 streak, as well as a clan ER small laser. Neither of these systems are particularly noteworthy or impressive on their own, if I'm honest. The PPC is the main attack mechanism. In addition to this, it has an active probe in the center torso, improving its ability to recon areas, but also helping it combat electronic countermeasures. Overall, the Prime is just what it is. It benefits from the Omnimex heavy protection and speed, and it allows it to take pot shots at targets at the best ranges it has available. It also isn't particularly ammunition dependent either. It's a solid, dangerous choice. Clan battle mechs are normally meant for dueling and trials, and the Fenders can make that a reality, but the Prime is best suited for a real battlefield. Not the play of war that the clans originally envisioned it for. Another configuration designed more for support than for dueling, the one which will struggle to deal any kind of major damage, is the Ice Ferret Sea. Using its speed to keep distance, this harasser and support mech will come with three dramatically frustrating LRM-5 launchers, all of which are upgraded with an Artemis IV fire control system. Each launcher has one ton of ammunition as well, meaning all of them have 24 rounds of fire. Few enemies will be able to respond to this fast mover at long range, providing turn after turn of frustrating fire, each shot trying to land a hit on a vital spot or hitting opened plating. On its own, it is very weak, but as a component of a force that's not following Zelbringen, it's a real contributor. To try to defend itself otherwise, it has a laughable ER small laser. Perhaps the best overall variant of the Ice Ferret, the D configuration is a predictably optimized design, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, though it may be somewhat boring to utilize. Make no mistake though, between the chassis' other virtues and its firepower, the D is the most dangerous of the clan invasion era, and perhaps well beyond that too. To start with, it has an AMS to enhance its defenses, along with of course one ton of ammunition. But the real threat is simply put, the fact it has four clan medium pulse lasers. These are accurate, and hit sufficiently hard that they can never be ignored. One is in the center torso, while the others are split between its arms. Able to close with targets, hit accurately, or even get backstabbing attacks with this battle mech makes it a threat to anything it faces, in any weight bracket. When one sees this model, beware. Fast, smartly gunned, and durable are a deadly combination. Officially listed as a striker, this ill clan based design, the J configuration, is a very unique take on the Ice Ferret, investing in a series of smaller weapons which may be overlooked in order to create a devastating close range killer. Using its speed to close with its opposition, one would not want to be on the wrong side of the J, especially if it can't be neutralized at range. It also makes it a superb bug killer more specifically. To start with, it has 10, yes that's right, 10 ER small lasers, with 5 in the right arm and 5 in the left arm. These lasers combined do the ridiculous total of 50 damage if all of them hit, and the Ice Ferret can safely run and fire all of them without overheating. Their range is limited, being only 6 hexes, but it has the speed to make that a reality. To enhance these yet furthermore, they're all routed through a center torso aligned targeting computer because of course they are. To add some firepower to this walking light show, the J has one heavy machine gun in each of its arms as well. Now, all of this is pretty ruthless to begin with, but what if it gets potentially even worse for its opponents? The Ice Ferret is of course very fast, but how much faster would it become with a supercharger? The answer to this is much faster. 
It mounts one of these, which increases its movement to a shocking 16 hexes in the tabletop game, allowing it to move over 170 kilometers per hour. Doing so is a risk, especially if it's done routinely during a battle. But this ice ferret can move, and when it closes with its target, that target will be cut in two by laser fire, especially from behind. The Ice Ferret's journey is a long, winding path from its creation in the 30th century. It started as the Wolf Hunter, created by Ice Hellion to fight Clan Wolf. It became the Ice Ferret, falling into the hands of the clan which it was meant to destroy. It is now realistically the Fenris, being produced and operated by the now desperate Leering Commonwealth in its battles to restore itself and survive in an ever more dangerous inner sphere. The battle mech has proved its value on the battlefield in countless campaigns over two centuries. Fast, durable, and able to have its weapon systems reconfigured between battles, this clan medium mech proves that speed, armor, and dedicated firepower and purpose are achievable when using advanced clan technologies. This wily predator is nothing if not survivable, however. When used in the right conditions, it will outrun, outfight, and outlast its opposition, or just never allow them to engage with it at all. It is a clever design, but one which must be implemented thoughtfully to be successful. Its backstory, however, also proves that Clan Wolf is absolutely ridiculous, and that at no point in its history can we get around any of You make a choice to win, and you win. Thank you for joining me here today. It was hard to pick what configurations to cover for this mech, as while many are useful, they don't entirely feel that inspired. I really wanted to display some variance in how it operates at the same time too though. All the same, it was fun to cover even if I clearly think its backstory is a perfect example of the things I'm not necessarily huge on in the setting. But with all of that said, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel for more content. I release videos often and you'll be happy with the content, I think. Also a giant thank you to all the YouTube members who support this channel. When you hit the join button and become a member, you take the extra step in supporting the content that I do on this channel and I can't thank you enough because this content is really only made possible because of viewers like you. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in the comment section below.